A farm isn't just a place for raising cattle. It's a world of unique, often unbelievable tasks. From skinning crocs to branding, each job needs skilled, experienced farmers. For years, docking lambs' tails has been common on farms. Millions of Australian lambs undergo this procedure yearly. It's key for sheep health and farm efficiency. In large flocks, long tails can cause various issues. They collect waste, causing hygiene problems and infections. Long tails also make shearing more difficult. Tail docking starts with guiding lambs to a specific area. Traditionally, the tails removed with a special knife and the wounds treated quickly to prevent infection. In New South Wales, farmers use specialized tools for tail docking. The process is well coordinated. One person holds the lamb on the table while another performs the procedure. Everything's done swiftly to minimize the lamb's pain. However, most farms now use rubber rings for tail docking, seen as more humane and less painful. The rubber rings placed firmly at the tail's base, cutting off blood flow. After a short time, the tail falls off naturally with minimal pain. This method's widely used in major sheep-producing countries like Australia and New Zealand. Regardless of the method, lambs still risk infection from open wounds. Farmers must ensure lambs get vaccines to prevent diseases. In reality, cattle health care alone isn't sufficient. Farmers should also take steps to prevent cattle theft. Branding is used to mark cattle and identify their owner. Most cows have a unique symbol, helping owners manage their herd. Texas farmers brand cattle annually from December to April. The process involves tying cattle down by neck and legs. A hot branding iron is pressed on the animal's shoulder or hip. Branding requires precision and experience. The iron must be hot enough to mark, but not cause injury. Each hot iron is pressed on the skin for seconds, but the scar stays on the animal for life. It's basically a burn from heated metal, and during branding, Cattle experience significant pain. Farms must ensure animals get health checks before and after branding to reduce infection risks and maintain welfare. The main goal of cattle branding is to prove ownership of lost or stolen animals. Farmers typically must register their brand with local authorities to avoid confusion or disputes. Harvesting deer antlers is crucial on specialized farms. This practice is common in New Zealand, Russia, China, South Korea and parts of Vietnam.
Young antlers are valuable for their nutrients used in medicine and functional foods. Farmers harvest in spring when antlers are soft and full of blood vessels. This timing ensures the highest quality antlers. In New Zealand, one deer herd can yield 300 antler pairs per season, steady income for farmers. Farmers use anesthetic injections before cutting to minimize deer pain. Antiseptic solutions and hemostatic agents are prepared to treat the wound after cutting. An experienced farmer with proper equipment can process 10 to 30 antler pairs daily. The deer is safely restrained to prevent movement, which can be dangerous during the procedure. A small dose of local anesthetic is injected near the antler base to further reduce pain. The farmer uses a specialized saw to cut the antler 2.5 to 4.5 centimeters from its base. This is done quickly and precisely to minimize blood loss and animal discomfort. After cutting, the antlers are sprayed with an antibacterial solution to clean the wound. These solutions help prevent infections and promote healing. Once removed, the antlers are taken to a processing area. Farmers neatly arrange them on drying racks to ensure proper preservation during processing. The antlers are first washed with water to remove dirt and blood. Then, they're steamed or lightly boiled to retain their nutrients. After this, they're dried using methods that vary based on farm conditions and processing techniques. The dried antlers are then cut into smaller sections and sorted by quality and size. The antler base with the highest nutrient concentration is considered most valuable. Deer antlers play a key role in medicine and health supplements, benefiting farmers and consumers. Worldwide, millions of horses are bred on tens of thousands of farms. To keep them healthy and fit, Farmers provide proper nutrition, exercise, and regular checkups. One key aspect of horse care is hoof trimming, which protects legs and overall well being. A common hoof issue is abscess, often causing lameness and visible pain in horses. Farmers start hoof care by trimming the sole and hoof wall. This needs precision as overcutting can worsen lameness or seriously injure the horse. Before trimming hooves, farmers heat an iron bar until it's glowing. They then bend and shape the hot steel to create a horseshoe. Once formed, the team hammers the hot steel to make it more flexible for a better fit. The farmer then gently lifts the iron bar and heats it again. Farrier cleans the horse's hoof, removing dirt and debris with special tools. This prevents discomfort and infection keeping the hoof healthy. For injured hooves, they're bandaged to comfort the horse and prevent infection. 
Injured horses rest in a separate area away from other animals. Hooves are trimmed every six to eight weeks to maintain ideal condition. Horses on hard surfaces often wear horseshoes to protect their hooves. Annually, over 1.5 million crocodile skins are exported from about 30 countries. Crocodile skin harvesting is crucial, determining leather's value based on quality and finish, directly impacting market price. Crocodile leather, highly prized in luxury fashion, is used for bags, shoes, wallets, and belts. Millions of crocodiles are farmed worldwide, generating significant economic value for the global fashion industry. Before skinning, the crocodile is placed on a table and a precise neck cut is made to ease the process. A metal pin is inserted into the spine to keep the body stable. Farmers spray water to remove blood, reducing bacterial risk and preserving leather quality. The process starts with a cut along the neck's midline through the nape shield. Next, a row of scales on both sides of the dorsal midline is removed starting from the neck down to the base of the tail, leaving a wide band of two row scales along the center of the back. The farmer then cuts from the belly where the skin is prized in luxury fashion. The main cut is carefully made and separated from the muscle layer for clean removal. After tanning, the croc skin is cut to size for various luxury goods like bags or belts. The thinnest sections, usually belly skin, are chosen for high-end fashion items. Finally, the individual leather pieces are sewn to create the final product. This step demands exceptional craftsmanship, with every detail being impeccable.